The idea for this video came from a comment a little while ago, and I thought it was a really good idea to explore ways that we as artists can be more eco-friendly. I've done some research and also had to think about what I already do. Do let me know in the comments though if you have any thoughts or ideas that I haven't mentioned. So let's talk about what I do and what I've found. First up, let's talk about Amazon. So you can shop on Amazon by climate pledge friendly products, and you can see which ones these are by the little badge. Amazon have partnered with some certifications and made some of their own. And you can see all of the certifications they've partnered with at the bottom. This is how they decide which products should have the climate pledge friendly badge. All of the products on this page meet Amazon's eco-friendly certifications and they also have compact packaging. That's called compact by design and it's a sort of no fluff minimal packaging. So the product is the same just the packaging is less. Amazon have made a diagram showing the difference between normal packaging and minimal packaging so you can see the difference here between the two mascaras. The idea being it not only cuts down on the packaging itself, so the cardboard, but also it will reduce the amount of shipping that needs to happen from the manufacturer to Amazon. Basically, they'll be able to fit more product in less boxes. Now I have put a link for this in the description because I haven't found it particularly easy to find on Amazon. I did also try searching for some of the common pencils that I use and none of those are on there. There are some color pencils on there but none of the main brands that I use. So I don't think it's so much that you should absolutely buy everything in this section of Amazon. It's more somewhere where when I'm going to buy something, I just check in the section first and see if I can find something that will work. And it might be something as simple as just buying a pencil sharpener from here rather than the main bit of Amazon. All right, let's take a minute to talk about single use plastics. This is a big one to want to reduce. Now on a daily basis, I wouldn't say that I really use any single use plastics in my drawings, although one that you wouldn't necessarily think about is Q-tips. I don't use them every day, but I do use them when I blend with solvents. If you live in Europe, Q-tips are likely to not be made of plastic. A couple of years ago, the EU introduced a law that bans single-use plastics. So that was things like straws, but also covered plastic Q-tips. So generally speaking, if you buy them in Europe, they're made of cardboard instead. Now this may not be the case elsewhere, so it is worth checking before you go out and buy Q-tips and see if you can get hold of cardboard ones. Now I am being quite specific here. It'd be worth having a look at the art materials that you use and see if there are any single-use plastics. And if you can, then, swap them out for something else. Now I've had a whole week researching eco topics and I wanted to draw a picture along these lines. Whenever I think of this kind of topic, I generally think of turtles. So that is what I've drawn. If you would like to draw this with me, the real time video is available on my Patreon along with loads of other tutorials. Every video includes detailed instructions along with the reference photo, swatches of all of the colors I'll use and the sketch outlines. Check out the link in the description if you want to find out more. All right, so we've talked a little bit about where you can buy products from and single use plastics. Let's talk about what you can do on a day to day basis as far as actual drawing goes. And here I want to particularly focus on waste. Little things do make a big difference. Now my general philosophy has always been to use all of what you've got, which does fit with the cutting down waste, but it is also cheaper. So with that in mind, I'm going to start off by talking to you about what I do with my pencils. Now when I'm drawing when a pencil gets to around this sort of size I would say it gets quite uncomfortable to hold and by the time that it gets to this sort of size it's basically impossible to hold unless you have a way to make it easier to get around that and so I can use my pencils right to the end I have some pencil extenders these are tubes that you can screw onto the end of a pencil and it basically makes the pencil longer and therefore makes short pencils much more comfortable to work with. So this does allow me to let my pencils get much further along before I have to bend them. In fact, this is as short as I can allow a pencil to get and I'm only going to throw it away at around this sort of time because I can't really sharpen it anymore. So I do highly recommend getting these. They are very handy to have around. I've put links in the description of the specific ones that I have. Now another idea that popped into my head a few weeks ago when I was doing a Brut Funa review is how where possible it would be better to stick to open stock pencils. Now the Brut Funa pencils did perform very nicely but 
I can't buy individual pencils separately. I have to buy a whole set again. Now generally I find that I use two or three pencils, they're usually browns, way faster than the rest of the colours. And if I had to buy a whole new set every time that I ran out of it, I don't think that that's a very good message in terms of waste. So I do personally try and stick to open stock pencils just so that I can replace those three pencils that I've used and not have to waste loads of packaging buying another full set. I do also try to not waste paper. Now I find a lot when I'm drawing I need to run little tests or make some little swatches but I don't want to use a whole new sheet of paper to do this. What I tend to do instead is find a older drawing and draw on the back of that. Now I wouldn't do this on a full piece of artwork that I'm completely happy with so I won't be doing this on the back of the turtle. But where it's just odd little sketches that I've done or maybe something that I've drawn that hasn't worked out, then I will still use the back of that piece of paper. And in fact, for a lot of videos that I do where I'm just testing out art hacks, for example, I will still draw on the other side of the paper. The pencil doesn't show through and I don't like to waste it. But do test that before you start drawing on the back of all of your artwork. Your paper might be different to mine. Now I've talked a lot up until now about the things that we can do, but really the big differences and the big responsibilities I think fall on the manufacturers of the products. So I think it's important that we research the companies that are making these supplies. We want a company that is an eco-friendly manufacturer. I want to try and support the companies that behave in a sustainable way. Now I did some research on some of the brands that I use and I must say it is a really interesting read. So for example, Faber-Castell really focuses on making a sustainable forest. Most of what they talk about is how their forests help reduce CO2. So that's where the wood that goes on to make their pencils comes from. Karen Dash are particularly focusing on reducing their water. They say that they've reduced it by 30% in the last four years and are also recycling some of the waste. They've also changed the coating on their pencils so that it's now water-based and they don't use solvents. So a lot of these companies I feel are taking responsibility and moving in the right direction. So I have found that most brands have a page completely dedicated to how their company is being sustainable. So generally if you search for the brand name and sustainability something will come up. I tried to find out some information on Prismacolor. Prismacolor are made by Newell brands. They also make Sharpies for example and Yankee, loads of other products and their sustainability page is focused on their parent company as a whole rather than specific to Prismacolor. So it's a bit harder to find out what they're doing. Have a look at the links below where I've linked to all of these websites. All right, there's a few ideas that will hopefully give you some food for thought. Let me know any thoughts or ideas you have in the comments below. If you would like to draw a turtle with me, check out my Patreon. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. Happy drawing, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.